1 Corinthians chapter 10. Moreover, brethren, I will not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of the spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Praise God. My tension here is wilderness. Last week we discussed the issue of what is a wilderness. And we say a wilderness is a place that is dry. A wilderness is a place of pain and suffering. A wilderness is a place that it will seem as if God has forgotten you. A wilderness is a place that it will seem to you that the promises of God has been what? Suspended for some time. A wilderness is, can come in form of sicknesses, diseases, lack, suffering, and what have you. And we established last week that every person go through a wilderness. Every person go through a wilderness. Not just once. In fact, before any promotion, when God elevates you to a level, before God will take you to another level, there's usually a wilderness, which is a place of testing. And here the Bible is telling us that concerning the Israelites, that God overthrew them in the wilderness. In other words, it is possible for you to be in the wilderness and die in the wilderness. You can have a wilderness experience, but it is possible for you never to experience victory. And you know that out of about 6 million people that left Egypt, only two were able to see the promised land. From the time that God gave you a promise, most of us are filled with promise. My future is what? My future is bright. The vision God has given me is bright. I'm so happy about it. But the reality we must understand that before you possess your possession, there is a wilderness you must pass through. And nobody is exempted from passing through the wilderness. Jesus was not exempted. And I was saying that when the Holy Spirit came upon Jesus, we would have thought that that would be the beginning of his ministry. But immediately the Bible told us that what? When the Spirit came upon him, what happened to him? He was driven into the wilderness. So usually there is a wilderness that is standing before your promise and your what? Promised land. There is a wilderness for every human being. Our understanding of this concept is what will give us the victory. Once you do not understand that you have to pass through a wilderness to access the promise of God, once you do not understand this, there is a high chance that you will die in the wilderness. You will die complaining all your life. Where some people will press it and, and, and go into the promise of God, you, your life will be full of bitterness. You will grow very old and you are still old. You have not attained to the promise of God. Have you seen an old man pushing wheelbarrow? Last week I saw an old man pushing wheelbarrow. Old man who pushing wheelbarrow. Then I was wondering, how is it possible? Where are his children? Then it becomes obvious to me that one of the secrets of success is understanding the wilderness. The wilderness experience is supposed to last for 40 days. There is an amount time which spiritually is what? It's 40 days. But it can be multiplied. 40, 40, 40. Until you die there. If you do not understand. We will not go to everything we are discussing. But today I say I will talk on what. What not to do. 
when you are in the wilderness what not to do when you are in the wilderness let's take the next verse it's a Corinthians chapter 10 verse 6 sorry now these things were examples to the intent that we should not lost after evil things as they also lost it now briefly let me say something about this when you leave, read this verse without understanding the story you may think they were lost in after some things that were so bad but when you look at the context of the loss they had is that when they were in the wilderness there was no what there was no meat you remember the story it was manna manna is like cake so you can imagine you have eaten cake for what for two years and three years every day cake every day cake that is what the wilderness is experiences yesterday last week what i was saying is that in the wilderness experience god gives you manna and manna is what he gives you enough food for what for today you are living from hand to mouth you wake up in the morning there is nothing to eat in the afternoon it is that day that you are going to go and fetch food for today that's where they found themselves god fed them with manna and it was for a very long time and they were so tired and one day they begin to think of onions garlic and meat and they begin to complain and the bible here is saying they lost it after evil things are you getting what i'm trying to say in other words if you are in the wilderness god has not a portion luxury for you at that time if you desire luxury when you are in the wilderness you are lost in after what evil things It is evil because it was not a plan of God for them. God wants them to eat meat, isn't it? But not in the wilderness. In the wilderness is a place of testing. I wish all of us were here last week. For that's the main meat of the matter. So when you find yourself in the wilderness, you need to be very careful what you begin to demand. Maybe you wake up and begin to complain and say every day I'm eating from mouth, hand to mouth. Today I need to eat what? Something good. Let me see how I... Those kind of things that begin to come upon your life. Maybe you move around and you are trekking and your friend comes with a message this man and you begin to say, oh God, I've been serving you for 30 years. See where I am. See my friends. See how they are enjoying. God consider it as what? Lost in after what? Evil things. Once you are in the wilderness and God is giving you a manna, be patient with your manna. But if your eyes begin to look around, oh, before, before, some people even say, before I became a Christian, my life is better than this. And sometimes it's like that. You become a Christian and it seems everything has turned upside down. You are passing through the wilderness. You need to understand that there is an apportion time for the wilderness. Put your neck under the company, under God, and learn to live in the wilderness until the time that is apportioned for the wilderness. So he said, do not want lost after evil things. Let's see the next thing. So when you are in the wilderness, be careful of evil things. So that you don't begin to lust after evil things. Now the next verse says, neither be idolaters as some were. As it is written, the people sat to eat, to drink, and they rose up to play. Don't be what? When you are in the wilderness, one of the temptations that you be faced with is what? Idolatry. Idolatry. Idolatry is beginning to serve other gods. Because you can get so tired. You can get so frustrated. And you begin to think of idols that will help you. How many people who are trusting God for children have visited what? My made spirit hoping to get what? Solution to their problems. When you are in the wilderness, the chance for you to begin to look for chance. Now I'm saying this and I feel that you be saying it here. That all of us cannot look for chance. But I'm saying it in case on the future. Someone will come and tell you, ah, this is your problem. We don't want strong man of God. They will tell you man of God. But when you go there, you discover that what? Ah, this man of God looks somehow. By the time someone begins to tell you to bring chicken, begin goat, you know that you are in the wrong place. But when you are desperate, 
and it seems as if God has forgotten you. You know what happened in that story? The Bible said what? Moses, the one that they are trusting, has what? Has gone to the wilderness, have gone to the mountain, and he has stayed there for what? So there is no God and there is no Moses. Who will they look at again? There was nobody. So they met Aaron. They said, make idols for us. In the wilderness, one temptation they are going to have is the temptation to have an idol. But it says something there again. That the people sat down to eat and to drink. This is common with men. Do they eat and drink and what? And they are merry. Let us eat and drink for tomorrow we what? We die. That is why people who are passing in the wilderness, you see men sitting in what? You see men go to, what do they call those joints? Huh? Vegas. Does it join across? You see men, we go and sit down. Majelisa. Because you are so hopeless, and then be a palace. You see, a man who switch from work, you go and sit down there and be drinking till 10 o'clock, then you go home. Why? Because he has lost hope of God. He has begun to serve the God of what? Back off the God of wine. When you are in the wilderness, there is a tendency for you to begin to serve idols if you are not careful. But once you serve that idol, you are not making things better for yourself. You are making things very, very worse for yourself. In the wilderness, do not worship idols. Eight. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell one day three and twenty thousand. Now, why was fornication mentioned as you walk in the wilderness? In the wilderness is the likely time for sexual sin. I don't even understand what I'm trying to say. You are frustrated with God. You are discouraged. One of the commonest temptations that comes is what? For men, is what? Is women. Once the man is frustrated about life, the next thing he is looking for because there is an emptiness inside of him that he looks for God to fill that vacuum and it seems as if God is not available again. So that vacuum must be filled with something and usually is what is a woman. You remember that young man, the Bible said he carried a woman. Moses and Joshua were with him and he carried her to his tent. In the wilderness, there is a chance. But it's not only men or even women. For example, your marriage is going through a difficult time that your husband has abandoned you. Probably he has stayed for two years. He has not even touched you. He has not given you money. He has not done anything for you. Then all of a sudden, your a guy in the office will notice his unity because today you have gone to him and said, I don't have food in my house. The next day you have come to school fees, he said, where is your husband? He said, my husband, my husband is nowhere to be found. So what would the man do? The man will begin to think of what? Some ideas. And if you are not careful, one day you are going to fall. Story of told of a sister who was found herself in that situation. The husband will carry a woman and take to her bedroom. He will tell her, go out. And he take a woman to her bedroom, tell her, go to the palace. And he kept doing this. One day the woman got tired. There was one of her bosses that was after her. So one day she got, and met, she got angry and she said, I want to show him <laughs> that what? He's not the only person who knows how to play. So she arranged with our guy. And she's about against it now. She arranged with our guy. She booked a hotel room. She went to the hotel room. She saw the ogre there. The ogre was just as in, ah, he has been pursuing her for years. Fire brand. Now, God has answered his prayer. Sorry, you know God. The devil has answered his prayer. <laughs> But thank God for the Holy Spirit. In the midst of the problem, she said, when she stood up there, she just remembered God. And she said, I cannot do such a thing. You know, some men used to mistake and say, my wife, 
My wife can never cheat on me. The man is cheating, no? Every day he's cheating, but he just look at his wife. That's why some unbelievers come to the church to marry what? Going against his In fact, Muslims, I had a Muslim once, my Muslim guy once said, I want to marry a Christian because whatever I do for her, she'll be patient. Because it is till death what? That if it is Muslim, ah, this one, they will just pack their things and go. But I want to marry a Christian because whatever rubbish I throw on her, she will just accept it. But brothers, it's not like that though. When you put her in that wilderness, she is also proved to deviate that from the path. Now the next thing is that what? 9 verse 9. Therefore let us not tempt Christ as some of them tempted him and were destroyed by the serpent. You know what it means to tempt Christ? It is very common for us to be tempted to tempt Christ when we are in the wilderness. And let me give you a very common example of tempting Christ. The way you tempt Christ is what? To tell God, if you do not do these things, I will what? I will backslide. I won't say that to God though. I say God. If you do not do this now, backslide, I actually backslided. Not that I decided to backslide though. I just say, after the thing has passed and it did not happen, you know what I said? I was in the wilderness. I did not know this one then. So I came and I said, okay, from now on, no more ginger. I will pray in the morning, I will pray in the evening, I will go to church on Sunday. If I have time, I will go on Wednesday. God, that is the only thing I will do. Because you refuse to answer my prayer. You can't go. God has promised you deliverance. He has promised you something. But when you are in the wilderness, it seems as if it will not come. So you begin to tell God, if you do not do this, I will do that. The Bible says, do not tempt God. Do not put God to the test. The Bible says, they did and they were destroyed. And we say, God, if you do not give me a husband this year, I will marry an unbeliever. Have you heard sister say that? I will marry an unbeliever. If you marry an unbeliever, are you sometimes, sometimes, you know, are you doing God a favor by going to heaven? Anyway, we can say somebody loves you, so we can say, well, it's not a favor. He's the one that is doing you a favor. Don't ever find yourself in a position that you begin to what? That you begin to tempt God and say, God, if you do not do this thing. You cannot put, give God query. Do you know people can give God query? You don't know. You have never given God query. If you have never given God query, probably you have not pursued God as hard as you ought to pursue God. Now, a lot of people used to say, ah, God has always been good. God, God has done everything. I don't look at them. Say, my own case is not like that, though. My own case is not like that, though. You are saying God has always been good. Ah! There are times God put me in situation that I feel God. What is happening? Where are you? And if you are really, except you are not pursuing God, if you pursue God hard and you apply faith, one day God will make your faith crumble and crash. And you wake up and begin to think in your mind, I thought, <laughs> I thought, the life of faith does not mean we will not grow through the wilderness. You go through the wilderness where the Bible says do not tempt God. Do not tempt God. Do not tempt God. And the last thing we have here is our neither murmur as some of them what? Murmur. Murmuring. There is nothing that God hates that murmuring. What is murmuring? Murmuring is common, isn't it? It is possible for a man to murmur every day. Every blessed day you wake up, there is one murmuring in your mouth. What kind of a thing is this? What kind of a children are this one? What kind of a husband man did God give me? What kind of a wife did God give me? What is even happening? How come every day I'm broke? How come? How come I'm sick? Where God? Where are you? I've been serving you. Why can't you show yourself? God, what? This and that. Murmuring, murmuring. People of God, murmuring attracts demons. Just like praise attracts the presence of God. 
Anytime you sell more money, Zimu will be gathering around you to comment you the more. In fact, if you continue to murmur, it will reach a stage that they will tell you life is meaningless, go and kill yourself. Today, the rate of suicide, even among pastors, is increasing. Pastors will go and go carry gun and shoot themselves. Because they are tired with a little no money. Then they begin to grow big. You see, there will always be challenge in life. But you need to understand that what? You are not expected to murmur. I was reading about Jesus and I learned a very great lesson. And, and the Bible said Jesus was in anguish of spirit. The things that will cause anguish in our hearts will be plenty. But the Bible said as he was anxious in his heart, the Bible said he prayed to the more. Then I learned the secret. When I'm bitter, when I'm discouraged, when I feel bad, that is the time that your prayer goes up to heaven. Ask. The time that you feel like, oh, let me mama, let me complain. That moment, choose the opportunity and say, Father, I bless your name. Ah. As the pain increases, you go on your knees. <laughs> That's a battle look. Please go and try it. As the pain is increasing, your praise is increasing. As the pain is increasing, your praise is increasing. You are praising God in the midst of the pain. Anytime you feel like murmuring is a time to praise God. Don't ever allow your mouth to utter murmur. I was saying something. Yes, God. And that's what I'm saying. I know most of us are going through one thing or the other. It has a what? A lifespan. But we will get out of it quicker and faster when we understand the concept of the wilderness. Because when you're in the wilderness, all this temptation to all these things that I mentioned will come to you. But as you persist in faith and leave everything to God, one day you wake up and you discover that things are beginning to work, change. I think I'll need to do one more teaching on this. At the virtue of your promised land. Between the what? Between the wilderness and the promised land. The things that you need to do. Because wilderness happened to us all.